Okay, folks, we're going to go ahead and try to get back in the groove of doing some data recovery videos here. We've been uh, a little laxed on it uh, quite a bit, actually, over the last few months, and uh, we've actually just been extremely busy, and it just hasn't been something that uh, I've been able to dedicate a lot of time to, so I'm going to try to change that. We've got a few projects going right now that we are videoing and uh, are going to be putting out. Uh, and right now I just wanted to start off just doing something really simple and this may um, be something that actually helps you uh, get the data off of a drive yourself at some point uh, or it may not but uh, this is definitely something to look for uh, whenever you have an issue with a drive that does not power up uh, this is actually just a old parts drive that we have it's not a customers drive so anything we do here is not something that we are doing to an actual case this is just a 250 gigabyte Seagate drive um, and what will happen to these sometimes if they have a voltage overload or anything like that um, sometimes it may be noticeable if you had like a uh, you know, surge protector or something like that on your system that failed or if you had a voltage spike due to you know some sort of power flux or anything like that in your house sometimes even a brownout will occur and you don't even realize that there's been any fluctuation in the voltage but it'll happen and the next thing you notice is your drive does not power up at all and let me go through I've got this just little caddy here and bring the camera up a little closer and you'll see what this drive does when I power it up absolutely nothing it's dead quiet so what happens typically with these and with a lot of hard drives is they have um, a TVS diode that will generally work as a, a fuse and generally that TVS diode is what takes the brunt of the voltage overload and will short out and it does that specifically for that reason a TVS diode is essentially just something that suppresses voltage so that it does not uh, damage other components so what we have here is and I'm gonna try to if I can't get a good view of this with the camera I'm gonna take a picture of it on its own but I'm gonna zoom in on this upper left corner and you were gonna see exactly what the problem was with this board I don't know if you can see that you might be able to see um, right there that diode just has a little it's cracked just a little bit right there and that component actually did exactly what it's supposed to do and that is it's supposed to blow and it's supposed to um, absorb the over voltage so that none of the other components of the drive are damaged so it functioned as designed but what that does is it leaves you with a hard drive that does not power up so uh, a lot of times what people may be tempted to do is to take another drive let's say you take another one just like that and you pull the board off of it and you can see same board layout everything everything's identical on it and you go to put it on what will happen is the board is not compatible these hard drives have adaptive data that's stored on the controller boards that are unique to those drives. So, put this on here real quick and I'll show you what I'm talking about, what's going to happen. Now, older drives, sometimes you can get away with it to where, um, especially with some Seagate drives, you can get away with swapping one board for another one and, uh, and the drive will power up and it'll be perfectly normal. Uh, even with some Western Digital drives, you can do that, the older style. Uh, anything made within the last probably 10 years at least is going to have a hard time doing that for you. Um, so what you typically will have is you'll have a drive that either powers up, sounds perfectly normal, but the data is still not accessible, or you'll have a drive that powers up and just clicks. So we're going to go through and try to get the camera a little closer so that it picks up the audio from this. So I've taken this controller board off this other drive that's identical to this one and uh, 
putting it on here. Powers up. Sounds normal. And it clicks. That is due to just the incompatibility with the data that's stored on the platter versus the data that's stored on the actual chip itself. Um, and without having those two elements uh, coinciding with each other, the drive cannot calibrate properly, so it just clicks back and forth. And there's different modules that these uh, drives operate off of. Inside the hard drive, it's, you know, as far as the hard drive functionality goes, it's almost like a mini operating system inside the hard drive itself with different modules that control um, you know, where it stores unreadable sectors, where to write data to, where not to write data to, um, you know, anything like that that becomes uh, corrupted or if it becomes corrupted it can cause the same issue too where it sounds like a bad set of heads which is what this one sounds like with this board on it um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's always a bad set of heads sometimes it can be a problem with uh, like I said if you have put a different controller board on it that'll definitely do it um, also, it can be uh, sometimes firmware modules become corrupted, and you know, if the translator is damaged or something like that, it may sound normal, but the data is still not accessible. There's a whole host of things that can come up, but in this um, in this case here, we obviously know that it's just an issue with uh, the controller board not being compatible. You know, with the the chip that stores the firmware data not being compatible with that particular drive. Um, now what you can do is, what I generally recommend doing is looking at um, the board itself uh, if you have an issue like this. And this is really only specifically for cases where you have a hard drive where you're not really caring if you get the data back or not. If it's something that's absolutely critical, you know, by all means send it into a company that can actually help you. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be our company, but you know, Drive Savers, OnTrack, DTI, CBL, there's a f quite a few companies out there that are re reputable um, besides ourselves that can help you. Um, but you want to make sure that you go with a company that can actually do this type of work properly because what I'm going to show you how you can do this is not the way you actually should do it. It would be a case that, uh, like I said, if you had something, you had a bunch of music on this uh, drive or just something that you didn't really care if you got it back or not, you know, I mean, it, it's certainly worth it to do anything and everything you can that would be uh, the least amount of cost applied to it. But uh, you can go through and occasionally you can measure across these and sometimes these will be uh, measured out when they are um, functional. Uh, they may measure in ohms uh, anywhere from you know they may be zero uh, they may be just a zero ohm resistor uh, that, that's there sometimes like on these they probably measure um, well, let me pull it up it probably measures four or five hundred I'm thinking ohms of resistance let me go through and uh, turn this on right now it should probably measure zero let me see if I can get my camera to actually read the output on this as I test it to do a bunch of things at once here so let me just see here I measure across this component and you'll see up here the readout this is the damaged board yeah so this one's reading basically zero okay so not uncommon there sometimes they'll just read uh, as an open when they've blown out uh, this one here, if that was zero, then this one as a normal one should read a few hundred. Yeah, 700. So when you read uh, one board versus, if you have another board in, in, you know, in stock or you've ordered one or whatever, um, then you can go through and run a test on it to kind of determine if it's a TVS diode that's been damaged or not. Um, in this case we know it is. We also know that just swapping the board out does not work, so we can put that off to the side. Uh, if you have the hardware to be able to do it, you can actually reprogram um, the chips that are stored on the, the other controller board, which is generally what we do. We'll just go through and actually 
reprogram them and uh, or we just swap the chips over that's one thing too uh, but one thing you have to be cautious of is if you do anything like this you really risk uh, running um, making the situation worse because if there's something in the controller board itself that caused this TVS diode to become damaged uh, then by removing this which is what we're going to do then you run the risk of all that voltage instead of being absorbed here passing through and possibly passing through to the heads and knocking out the preamp on the head stack so what we're going to do though to show you kind of a quick way that sometimes this can work for you um, is to remove this TVS diode. I'm going to power up this hot air soldering station and let that come up to temp and it takes just a few seconds but we'll go through here I'm going to try to do this so that at least it is somewhat in view of the camera it's nothing major it's just removing a component it's really not that big a deal go. So removing that basically allows the voltage now to pass through. And again, that's the potential problem that you run into because if there was something that within the controller board that caused that voltage overload, well, you're going to be in deep trouble if that passes through to the other components on the drive itself because like I said, the TVS diode is nothing more than just a way to absorb um, an overvoltage situation. That's what they're there for. And without them there, well then it's allowed to hit everything else that is not maybe able to handle that much voltage. And I powered off the hot air station, so it takes just a second to cool off. But, um, so now all I've done is remove that TVS diode, put the board back on, and um, we will see how this sounds uh, now. I'll give that just a second. I'm going to edit that out. There we go. don't have to edit it out. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and power it up now. and it sounds perfectly normal didn't click it's normal calibration sound it sounds perfectly fine now guarantee this drive is perfectly accessible I'll shut it off and I'll show you again like I said all we did was just remove that TVS diode so that's something to keep in mind some Western digital drives have this issue uh, Hitachi's Seagate's especially um, so it's definitely something to keep in mind if you have a controller board that just the drive's not spinning up anymore and you're not wanting to spend, you know, hundreds of dollars to get the data back. So Yep, it's good. So that is just a quick possibly do it yourself type situation um that you can take care of if you have an issue like that on your own. Uh, but if you have anything more serious than that, uh, something where the heads are clicking, and no matter what you do, um, you know, the drive's still clicking, uh, you know, and you need actual data recovery, work done, head swap, whatever. If you have any inform any questions at all, or if you have a situation where the data is absolutely critical and you just don't want to mess with it and take any chances whatsoever, uh, feel free to give us a call, 1-800-717-8974. You can also visit our website at acsdata.com. We will be more than happy to talk to you uh, and help you. And uh, feel free also in the comments below to post a question, uh, anything like that. You can post requests, other videos you'd like us to, to try to do. We're always looking for ideas so we don't have the same type of content every single time. So I uh, appreciate you taking the time to watch. Again, uh, visit us at acsdata.com or give us a call at 1-800-717-8974. Have a great day.